Well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. And before we get started, I want to introduce our host, um, Apollo Sevilla with American Dream Mortgage. I've worked with Apollo for, well, I've known Apollo for close to 20 years. Um, a really super nice guy, honest, does what he says he's going to do, great character. Um, and that's everything you're looking for in a mortgage broker, right? Someone who actually is going to do what they say they're going to do, follows through, provides great customer service. Um, so I just want to get, take a second to introduce Apollo, and then uh, I'll come back up and introduce myself. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Brenda. Familiar faces, good to see you. New faces. Um, I've been in the business for since the early 2000s, on and off. Um, I am back in the business again, and um, one of the fortes at American Dream Mortgage is we have the uh, technology that a lot of the rocket mortgages, the, the, the dot coms have nowadays, but we have the backups and the experience that the big boys at Wells Fargo and Chase do. We are the right in house. We're in the top five uh, non-bank lenders in the country. So non-bank is that what you said? We're non-bank. We're a fund. Okay. But uh, we do a lot of underwriting in house, okay. and uh, we uh, we are uh, we have a lot of the, the new technology. We are the home of the flash mortgage, which stands for uh, fast loan approval, uh, honest. And simple. Um, would love to talk to you a little bit more after class, and would love to do business with you in the future. Great. Right. All right. So let's talk about the elephant in the room first. What did I do to my leg? <laughs> uh, so I was at a four-year-old's birthday party at Monkey Business, which is an inflatable obstacle course type of um. place and decided to race my seven-year-old through an obstacle course. Came over a hill, came down through two cushions, point first somehow, jammed my toe between two cushions, rolled the foot, heard this bone snap. So a week later, I had a screw put in right before Christmas and ski season. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so not my first rodeo on crutches, though. I think this is uh, my fourth time. I've had 10 broken bones on the right side of my body and then my nose. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so far, the left side is intact. Uh, but in any event, hi, thank you for coming. I'm Rick Jansen, a uh, realtor here in Denver since 2002. I moved here as a contracts attorney with an MBA in marketing. I uh, just decided I had a real passion for helping people with the biggest financial decision of their lives. I had a real knack for homes. I liked being out of the office, interacting with people. I think you guys could probably relate to that, right? The whole entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, son of an entrepreneur, he had had his own business for 53 years. And uh, I just got tired of billing every six minutes of my day. So, um, but <clears throat> about a year and a half ago, I got certified as a coach with Tim and Julie Harris coaching. So I'm a Harris, cert Harris certified coach affiliate. Uh, love the program, love the Harris coaching as well. And what we're going to go through today is uh, an outline of one of their classes. Uh, and I'm going to sprinkle it with anecdotes from my own experience and people I've talked to. Uh, because certainly, you know, even though I've been a five-star award winner for over five years and uh, you know, have posting some good numbers in real estate, I had an independent brokerage. I was too prideful to learn from other people. I didn't get a coach. I didn't invest. And so I struggled. Uh, I lost two houses to foreclosure. You, you do want to learn from me, I you know, but, uh, you know, we, we go through hard times, and that's why this real estate survival plan, if I had had something like this, you know, I wouldn't have had to experience the humility and shame of having my water turned off, right? It's pretty humbling to sit there at your bay window looking at a guy come out and turn the screw and then have to, like, shower with a gallon jug of water from Safeway. Uh, you can do it, but it's not cool, right? <laughs> so if... Um, you know, pulling myself out of that, uh, you know, I realized like other people need to be pulled out of that too. We all get into real estate because we want to help people. We want to serve people. We want to serve them to the highest possible level. And we want to do so with integrity, like Apollo serves his clients as a mortgage broker. And we, but we need the skills, right? The skills pay the bills. And so if you don't have those skills, um, you're not going to get very far. So 
you know, this class, uh, if you're watching it online or if you're, you know, in the audience here, is not necessarily, you know, because you're not watching this or sitting here because you're broke. But nonetheless, you know, who's this class for? Well, it might be, uh, you know, you just might have low cash reserves for right now, right? It's January as, as we tape this. Holidays just came through. Unexpected medical expenses happen. Christmas holidays run a little bit high. Uh, whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, it might have a flood. We had three floods in one home in one year. Um, some of those things can wipe out your cash reserves, right? You might be listless. And by that, I don't mean you're just sitting on a couch, but I mean you have no listings right now, right? You've been in a very low inventory environment for six years. Uh, and so people ask, uh, you know, how, are you, how many listings do you have right now? And you're like, well, none, because they sell, <laughs> you know? And the thing is, every time we sell a home, we put ourselves out of business, right? So we're perpetually unemployed. Uh, we got into real estate because we're unemployable. And then we put ourselves in the unemployment line every time we sell a house. So if we're successful, we're unemployed. It's a funny business. So you might be in a place where if you lose the deal that you've got going on, it's going to crush you, right? And we've all been there. Um, and you know, our goal right now through coaching is to get you out of a place like that. Uh, or you might have agents in your firm, right? We've got boutique brokerages. We've got flat fee brokerages. We have EXP. We have a lot of firms represented in a lot of different styles, but you might be coaching somebody, right? You might be here on their behalf. Uh, so with coaching, we aim to make you a strong enough agent that you really never have to use this plan again. But the plan is all about going back to basics, and basics are called that because they're basic, right? The Army has basic training, not because it's stupid, but because it's something everybody needs to know. And that's what this class is about. So... <coughs> Here, they're going to set down some rules, though, right? Uh, so first is actually follow the plan. Not cherry pick, not do some of it, not think, well, I can improvise, not like this is my excuse to get creative and go online and buy a bunch of shiny things. We have to actually follow the plan if we want to actually have the plan results. But if we don't follow the whole plan, then we can't blame the plan for not delivering the results, right? The second thing is do not try to <coughs> reinvent the wheel. Uh, after the class, I'd be happy to give you a bunch of scripts for all the thing, things we're talking about. These scripts are tried and proven by Tim and Julie Harris. And just a little background on them. Their first year out of the gate as realtors in Ohio, they sold 100 homes. Rookies. 100 homes. So they went on and kept that pace up for 10 years. Over 100 homes a year. And they finally said, huh, maybe we know something. Maybe we can teach that to people. And they became coaches. And now they coach everybody from newbies to $100 million producers. Um, one of their clients in North Carolina takes a listing every single day. Doesn't have a big team, just has like one administrative assistant. And um, so they, they, they see the whole landscape, right? And what they're coaching works, this is whether people actually are coachable and use it. Uh, so the other thing is do nothing but dollar productive activity during survival mode. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what dollar producing activity actually is, um, but it's not checking Facebook, right? It's not, uh, you know, researching or watching webinars or, you know, sorting your files and all that stuff. That's not dollar producing activity. So we'll talk about what that is. <clears throat> the other thing is do not spend any money during this time. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Um, and I might actually be into my plan. And so I might actually start using my presentation. <laughs> so there we go. So when to use it. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, now we're into the rules. <clears throat> so do not spend new money. Um, don't spend any money you don't have, right? It's, it's you, know, you get through Black Friday, you get through the end of the year sales, everybody's pushing their software and their easy button. Now you're in the first of the year, everybody's hyping the, this is how you get productive for 2020. And uh, you, there are like 14 coaching sessions a week right now, right? And almost every single one of them is selling something. I'm not, but almost every single one of them is, right? And so there are thousands of ways to spend money. Don't spend money that you don't have. Uh, and commit. This is temporarily, I hate to say it, a job, right? You're actually going to have to work eight hours a day, five days a week. Everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we don't like working that way. That's why we're realtors, right? We love like being able to work an hour here, an hour there, and fit it in around our life. And you can still design your lifestyle, right? 
You can time block. But we still have to, in time blocking, and we'll talk about that a little bit, remind me if I don't bring it up, but even in time blocking, you still have to schedule 40 hours a week of dollar producing activity. Um, <clears throat> so no hanging around negative people too. You know, there's some people who are gonna be like, oh, you know, we're entering a recession and going to war with the rent and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's gonna do nothing for your real estate business, right? Really what you have to do is just stay focused, stay positive, surround yourself with positive people who actually know they can affect their own life and the lives of people around them. Uh, remind yourself your te this is temporary too. It's really easy if you have a low cash reserve situation or a zero listing situation to get down. And then the, you know, the, the one, it's been proven the one person whose voice you hear and believe more than anybody else's in the world is your own. And so if you actually start talking to yourself and like, man, I suck, right? I'm at, this is never gonna, I'm never gonna pull out of this. And you start looking at the negative, that's where your head's gonna go. But you're gonna, your mind is gonna follow the most dominant thought. And so if you start thinking like, hey, I'm around positive people, I've got a plan, I'm taking action, I can look back, I can track my numbers, I'm doing eight hours, I'm doing the plan, I'm in dollar producing activity, you will pull yourself out of this, okay? Uh, and then ask for help. Right? It doesn't have to be from me. It doesn't have to be from Tim and Julie. It can be from Tony Robbins. It can be from uh, Tom Ferry. It can be from anybody, right? It can be from your neighbor down the street. That these are, you know, he or she is a productive real estate agent. Um, they're just a successful entrepreneur. But get help and realize when you need it. So our goal with this plan <laughs> is um, in the next 90 days or less to get you three new listings Three new buyers, three new pendings, and three new closings. How many people think that would be a good 90-day plan for the first quarter, right? Uh, personally, I think that would rock. That is right there more than, more than most realtors do in the Denver MLS in the entire year, right? If you close those 12 deals, I think that puts you in something like, what, the top 15% of realtors in Denver? Easily. I mean, it's, it's 20 to 10% somewhere in that range. Um, so what's the plan? Enough, um, so... <clears throat> We're going to start by making a list of 100 past clients, sphere of influence, uh, professionals, neighbors. You want the first name, last name, <coughs> phone number, email, and whether they rent or own. So how do we do this? We open our phone, and if you open your phone right now, I bet you have over 100 contacts, right? So A to Z, you just start calling, right? You, you want a goal of at least 10 a day. Uh, and that, I would say 10 a day is sort of your maintenance plan. If you're in survival mode, I'd jump that up to 20 or 30 a day. And it's a very simple phone call. It's the beginning of the year, right? You call up, you say, hey, um, you know, Apollo, great to talk to you. Happy 2020. I'm just updating my uh, contacts. I just want to make sure I have everything accurate for you. Is your email address Apollo at loanscloze.com? 1L? Yeah, okay. Um, and can you remind me, uh, you know, do you rent your own? Well, he's a mortgage broker. He owns. He knows better. <laughs> Right, so you get first name, last name, phone number, email, and whether they rent or own. And then you say, hey, thanks so much. Um, hey, is there anything I can do for you this year? It doesn't have to be real estate related. I mean, I know you know I'm in real estate, right? Remind them. But it doesn't have to be real estate related. Do you need a dog groomer? Do you need a babysitter? Do you need a handyman? You know that I'm in touch with hundreds of people all around this, all around this area. I'm in contact with high level professionals like myself. I would just love to be able to help you out. Not asking, you know, don't ask for anything, right? You don't say that, but you just don't. Uh, so you come from a place of giving. You try to limit your call to about five to seven minutes. It's not a social call. You're at work, and move on, right? If you want to add a little spice to that, here's a, here's a little tip. Uh, <clears throat> that's you know, everybody says, oh, I, you know, your highest compliment is your referrals. Yeah, right. And everybody puts that on their email signature, and it's pretty much worthless, right? Because what am I referring to you? I have no idea, right? I have no idea who's buying a home. I have no idea who's selling a home. But what I do know as an attorney, as a doctor, as a whatever, is, hey, you know, I'm on the phone. Hey, Apollo, um, before I go, do you know anybody who, you know, just got pregnant, just got married, just got engaged, just got divorced, just lost their job, just got a new job, got promoted, moving in town, out of town? Just got a dog that needs a fence or just, you know, has a shoe addiction and needs a bigger closet. <laughs> Who first comes to mind? And then you wait. Who first comes to mind? Pause. Pregnant pause. It's uncomfortable. It'll seem like a year. And you wait. And they're like, you know, um, I'm nobody. 
All right, cool. Well, someone comes to mind, give me a call. Hey, talk to you later. Bye. Right? You never asked for their business. You asked, you know, who they know. Because what are all those things? Those are reasons people move. Right? right? We, uh, you know, if you had told me in, in uh, end of July that I was going to move from one of, you know, a house that I loved backing up to green space and, you know, looking at the mountains, I would have said, heck no, you're crazy. And a week later, we were under contract. Because my wife got me to see the importance of uh, changing the public school for our youngest, need, our youngest child with special needs. We found that school. We put an offer on the only house on the market and went into contract. Because it wasn't about the house. It wasn't about finding the ideal house. It was about taking care of kids. Right? We ended up lining up in a good house because I'm a real But, <laughs> and God was smiling on us that day. But nonetheless, you know, it, it's, people move for a lot of different reasons, right? And it, a week before school, we, we decided to shop for a home and go into contract so we could have a contract to enlist in school. And those that you never know. I did it, I put a house in a contract on January 1st. People say nobody does business over the holidays. We toured on New Year's Eve and went into contract January 1st. <coughs> never predict that, but in that call, just ask those milestone questions. Uh, so you're also going to commit to, uh, number, uh, plan number two, you're going to commit to having a voice-to-voice -voice conversation with five people a day. <clears throat> right? So it's not leaving a voicemail, it's not sending a video text, and we can do all those things. Uh, does anyone know what the Ford script is? No. Okay, so it's a, it's a conversation primer, family, occupation, relationship, and dreams. Right, so in that five minute conversation, our first one, when we're making the list, we are on point, on time, building our database, right? But now, now that we're going back into, hey, let's settle back into a little, nice little pace of 10 calls a day, seven minutes a call, now we're gonna have that voice conversation and we're gonna talk about family. Hey, you know, Paul, how's the family? How are they doing? How's your dad? Right? Uh, occupation. So, you're, uh, you know, Paul, if I remember correctly, you're a mortgage broker, right? Anything exciting coming up on the mortgage front this year? Where do you see interest rates going? And what's he going to do after we finish talking about his job? Ask about yourself. Reciprocate, yeah. right? I don't have to call him and say, I'm a realtor! He's going to say, hey, Rick, remind me what you do again? Right? He's going to ask me, and then you know, he's going to always ask the question, how's the market? Because people don't know what question to ask. Right? And there are a whole bunch of ways to answer that script as well. Um, if you at any point during this, during this or later text the word free call to 31996, uh, we'll give you all these scripts. Uh, you can get a free one hour coaching call with a Tim and Julie Harris coach. Talk about your own uh, treasure map to success, uh, what coaching would look like, or just you know say, hey, here's my 2020 plan. Rip it apart for an hour. See you later. Bye. Thanks for the free books and scripts. You can do that too. Uh, the coaching starts at $100 a month. I'm not selling it, but uh, it is available for you. So open houses. Every weekend until you have three pre-approved, motivated, qualified, cooperative buyers with nothing to sell, right? You're gonna put 10 directional signs up, you're gonna door knock for an hour beforehand. Uh, you know, has, anyone, has anyone ever door knocked an open house? Yeah. Yeah, how'd it go? It's good. It's fun, right? Yeah. It's terrifying. It is, <laughs> So it's terrifying and fun and it works, Yeah. right? And it's back to the basics. Yeah, it's, it, I really liked it, strangely enough. So, yeah, so I door knocked one time. This is Saturday morning. Uh, recent, one time recently, I door knocked. And I was trying, I was experimenting with like giving away trips or raffling and stuff like that. All sorts of different gimmicks, right? Um, but, you know, even if you don't use all the little gimmicks, what you can't, you know, it could be a $50 Starbucks card or pick a popular restaurant or whatever is sort of a reward. We're going to do a raffle. But you can also just say, hey, um, knock, knock, knock. Um, Hey, Mrs. Homeowner, how you doing? I'm Rick Jansen. I'm a realtor. I'm holding an open house down the street. Aren't you curious what it looks like inside? Everybody always is. Absolutely. And you know what? Yes. Tam, absolutely. Tam, and Tammy's always wanted to know, you know, she wants some honest feedback from her neighbors, right? Because we're just going live. So if you could just come over for a couple minutes and just give me some feedback, I'd certainly appreciate it. Right? So would she. And I'll help you pick a good neighbor, right? Here's my card. Come on over, blah, blah, blah. Um, so commit to doing open houses. Now, if you don't have lists, listings, how do you get open houses? Call other agents. Call other agents, right? So you can network within your own firm. Um, I know EXP has like an open house group on Facebook, like Facebook Workplace, where they share open houses. I'm sure, HomeSmart and Remax and others have similar things. 
If your own office doesn't have any, you can go outside your office, right? Pick up the phone and call. Uh, now, some brokerages have a rule against letting someone else hold their listing open, and it's just going to sit there vacant and dormant. And I used to be that closed-minded at my own boutique, and I admitted. <laughs> I was like, if I'm too lazy to hold an open house, no one else is going to get the business. <laughs> and so I'd shut it down, but I'm doing, I was doing it by a homeowner in this service, right? And so, again, I've kind of humbled the pride, opened myself up to new ideas, and I love holding million-dollar open houses. Uh, you know, I just call someone up. I'm like, hey, can you pull me a listing? Can I hold that open for you and do you a favor? Because who comes to open houses? Buyers. Buyers, buyers. right? Buyer, home buyers don't come to Starbucks. Home buyers don't come to your franchise office. Home buyers come to homes, right? And so they're, they're, you know, when you get coached, there are all sorts of ways to learn to talk to people at open houses. But go back to basics. Uh, so another, another part of the plan is follow up. Follow up with 100% of your leads every single day. Now, Tim has a rule. He said you follow up until they list or buy with you. They tell you they've listed or you know, purchased with somebody else. They tell you to go climb in a river or they file a restraining order. <laughs> but until that happens, they're fair game, right? Now, the only way they're going to tell you, to go, you know, to go jump in a lake or file a restraining order is if you're actually not being nice, right? So be nice genuinely come from a place of wanting to help people, and it goes a long way. Uh, so leads, leads actually have no value. Appointments have value. So your whole goal, 100% of the time when you're on the phone with someone, is to get an appointment and to be in front of somebody. Would you agree? Yes. Because appointments lead to conversations, a conversation leads to business, whether it's with that person or not. Now you're also going to call 100% of expires. Committing to five voice conversations with an expired a day, and you're going to door knock the high value targets. Now imagine everybody here has a pre listing presentation and a formal listing presentation. A pre listing presentation is one that you drop off before you have the appointment. Right? So you're on a phone call, hey, Mr. Mrs. Seller, uh, you go through the whole expired script, right? You get the appointment uh, because who's an expired? Someone who wants to sell someone who's willing to hire a realtor and pay them to do the job, and someone who already knows what price doesn't work, right? And they also know their marketing didn't work. So you come in with better marketing, better pricing opinion, uh, you know, they're already willing to pay you, and they, they have a reason to sell, you just have to remind them. You have to find that emotional hook, get back to, hey, where were you going after this, right? When your beautiful home sells, and I gotta tell you, this place is amazing, uh, when your home sells, where are you going? Oh, you're going fishing in Montana? Oh, tell me about that. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Sit <laughs> here. Right? <clears throat> Get them to remember the dream of why they wanted to list in the first place. That you're going to door knock the high value targets, right? Or not targets, prospects, people that you're going to want to help insert. So um, <clears throat> you start with the area where you're comfy, right? And you know, kind of that little radius around your house where it's easy to drive, easy to walk, um, you know, not necessarily on the one-wheeled scooter, but you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, right? Uh, so start with that. But if there aren't enough, right? Everybody says, "Oh, we're in a low list, low inventory environment all around the country." Well, then branch out a little bit, right? Where do people who are moving to your neighborhood, your prime neighborhood, that honey pot that you've been living in for a little while, is currently dry? Where did they live before? Where do they go after them, right? Start little, kind of exploring those areas. Or go way back, right? No one's calling expires from six months ago. Nobody has the patience, quite honestly. So dial back, right? So a lot of ways to get phone numbers, Mojo, Red X, Vulcan 7, uh, all the big names out there. If you don't have one of those, uh, you know, see me afterwards. I can help share my database with you. We can work something out. Uh, so next. Uh, so broker pricing opinions is another way to make cash. Uh, does everybody know what a broker pricing opinion is? It's somewhere between a CMA and appraisal, right? CMAs is what we get paid to do, uh, kind of a light and easy comparative market analysis. And appraisal we haven't gone to school for yet. It takes a lot longer, and they get paid you know four to six, seven, eight hundred dollars for an appraisal. Uh, but a broker pricing opinion, you might get paid anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty dollars a pop by a bank. But this is a, you know, this is ordered by a bank. Right? And I can give you a list of all the banks you can register with. And we're not in a, you know, a high foreclosure or high short sale environment right now. But it's still A, a good way to cut your teeth. B, a great way to stay in touch with where the market is. 
C, you get a lot faster at doing CMAs, right? And how do you get really good at listing homes or in pricing homes? Practice. Pricing a lot of homes, right? So, and someone's paying you to do it. So you might you know, say, hey, if I do four of these a day, I'm gonna make 200 bucks, $800 a week, or $1,000 a week, that's $4,000 a month. Maybe that takes care of your mortgage and your car payment, it takes a little bit of pressure off, right? So instead of driving for Uber or doing something that's really distracting, um, you know, I, I was talking to one agent recently, and no offense, man, I love you, but he's driving so many nights a week that he can't do real estate. And he can't follow up on the leads from his Uber, right? And so if you get yourself in a hole and you're dependent on too little of income, you can never get the pop of the $500,000 listing that'll get you out of the hole, right? So it's, you know, settle down, find some time, do some broker pricing opinions, um, get in a rhythm, because when the short sale environment of the foreclosure market ever does come back, this is your source of short, short sales and foreclosures. You already have a relationship with the bank. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good place to be. Uh, <clears throat> so, da -da -da -da. and it helps you stay frosty, as Tim says. So t staying frosty, uh, I think is a military term, but it's like it keeps you on your toes, right? It keeps you situationally aware of your environment, which is real estate and the market. So when people say, how's the market? You have a great answer for that question. Now you all know one of the best answers is, well, it depends. Are you thinking of buying or selling? Right? Get them to answer the question. Never answer the question because then the conversation is done. So flip it around and get them to, uh, you know, with another question. Answer the question with a question. Be a bit of a politician. <laughs> so uh, referrals. So there are some low-cost or no-cost referral sources I can share with you, too. Let's skip to those. All right, so um, agentmachine.com is one place uh, that you can go register, get some leads. Uh, agentpronto.com is another one. zbuyer.com, uh, so it's Agent Machine, Agent Pronto, Z Buyer. It's not just for buyers, they actually do have some listing leads. I think there's a small expense for that, but it's low compared to you know, some of the big three that you see dominate search engines. Um, another thing you can do here is, uh, so these are, so, putting these up on the board so that you can see them. Uh, you may or may not get a lead out of these, but if they're free, register, why not, right? Uh, just one more, one more uh, bucket. 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE. Uh, these are sign riders, and there are a number of companies that do sign riders. I'm not endorsing this one specifically. I know Tim loves them. Uh, but for just a little bit of money, you can put a sign rider on, on and say, hey, you know, text information for this house, because who's a buyer? the person in the car outside looking at the sign texting you, right? They may or may not be represented, but that's also not the first question you're gonna ask, right? Just be of service to them. You're not trying to win them over, you're not sign crossing, and I, I'm 100% against that. Uh, but you can tell them, hey, you know, are you looking to buy a house? You know, what's your price range? Are you working with an agent? Lead with something else, right? Lead adding value, put the, are you working with an agent under contract, you know, are you under contract to work with an agent in a little bit later? I've had people call me and they say, you know, hey, I've been working with an agent, but I don't have a contract and I don't like it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Half my job was already done for me. <laughs> You've seen all the homes you don't like, let's go find a house you do like. Uh, so asking for referrals. You can do this in your office. You can also do this with neighboring offices. If you took off another employing brokers, you know, so that's their mood. But um, you know, just start calling around. Uh, people who have big teams, people who have big listing teams, no longer work with the buyers, right? Because the money's in the listings. And they don't have the time, energy, or interest anymore. They cherry pick. Hey, I'm gonna work with this million dollar buyer and that $900,000 buyer because they're easy, they're really motivated, she's eight months pregnant, let's go. But all the rest of them, their team might not even be able to absorb. So where do those 200,000, 400,000, 500,000 dollar buyers go? They should go to someone on the survival plan. So offer them a generous referral split. Say, hey, you know, what could I do uh, to win your business, your referral business, your overflow? Uh, you know, I find myself with a little bit of a dry pipeline right now. I'd love to help you out. I'm really experienced, and I'm just calling around and uh, I'm hustling. And if I hustle to call you, I'm going to hustle for you. Know, I'm going to hustle on behalf of your client too, so you can trust me. Um, it takes a little bit of what humility, but you're also you're not doing it from a place of being down in the dirt. You're coming from a place, remember positive thoughts, you go where your strongest thought is, 
you're coming from a place of, I am someone who's worthy, skilled, talented, able to provide great customer service. I just have to be without somebody right now. But I know I can do the job. And I'm going to do a darn good job. And so anybody who gives me a referral is blessed to have them. And you tell yourself that, and you call that person, and you communicate that through your voice, standing up, smiling while you're talking, you're going to have that result. Absolutely. So if you do have listings, get a commitment by your seller to reduce the price 5% every two weeks or every 10 showings until it sells. Because price sells, right? It, it overcomes location. It overcomes smelly dogs. It overcomes disaster. Uh, but price will always sell a home. And you can think, you know, we've been in this market in the Denver area where homes have been appreciating 10 to 20% year over year, year after year. And we're slowing to you know, maybe 3 to 5% a year, which is still growth. But people aren't accustomed to that. So they want to price 20% over, and they're not going to get it. And so that's where someone's going to go expired, go withdrawn, they're going to have a bad experience because if someone hasn't been doing broker pricing opinions, they're not savvy on the market and frosty, right? And they dump their pricing any way the seller wants just to get the business because they're desperate for a commission. And they're not doing that home seller a service by telling them 10% too high because we all know that if you price 10% too high and this is fair market value, this is where you're going to sell, right? So you're going to, you're going to chase the market down and never catch up. So you need to come in uh, accurately priced. And if for any reason, you know, don't turn down the listing because you're in survival mode. Don't turn down the listing because someone else is going to overprice it. Be willing, you know, know that there's going to be expense. Pace yourself. Don't do it all the time, but get them to commit to reducing their price right up front in the listing agreement. So getting help. Again, I'm just going to put this uh, text number on there. When you do the text, uh, you put 31996 as the phone number. And then free call is the message. And you're not going to hear from me. You're going to hear from someone from Tim and Julie Coaching. Get on, you know, schedule a quick call for 45 minutes, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour, whatever, you know, whatever you can do. Uh, but you get some great books, great scripts, access to everything, expired scripts, FISBO scripts, open house scripts, open house, you know, strategy. Um, I think he has like 10 ebooks as well, you just get for free. So you can spend all your time reading and not making money, which is not dollar producing activity. Uh, but you can do it in your off time. So short sales, uh, if, you are, if you do have any short sales, uh, they should not be pending for long periods of time anymore, right? We were, in a, we were you know, a long time ago, I remember, uh, where my favorite phrase was, there's nothing short about a short sale, <laughs> right? It would take nine months to a year meeting on the agent. Um, that's not the case anymore. So if your short sales are taking a while, get some help. And lastly, lather, rinse, repeat. If you follow this plan, if you adhere to the rules, right, you're in dollar producing activity eight hours a day, five days a week. You're making calls. You've updated your 100 people in your database. You're talking voice to voice with five of your contacts every day. You're talking to five expireds. You're door knocking the high value targets. If you even just did that, think about how much your business would grow, right? Getting off of email, getting off of text. I was on a webinar yesterday. And the, and the tip from one person to get a million dollars in business is send 10 video texts. Disrupts the business, the pattern of somebody and puts you in front of them, right? And they'll open it and watch it. I don't know if I would actually watch a 30 second video. I don't listen to voicemails anymore. I read the transcription, I delete it before I listen to it. And I call them back, I'm like, hey, I don't wanna to listen to your three minute voicemail. What do you got, right? People are impatient. And while that might work a little bit as a stop gap, and I'm not gonna poo poo that strategy because she's making, you know, she's selling, you know, a million a year, uh, GCI. But what I would recommend is something like that is always secondary to voice to voice. Because people are gonna know you, like you, trust you, when they can hear you, see you, and touch you. Which they do on an appointment, right? So that voice call is to get reconnect, to say let's go grab a coffee. Or come over to my house for coffee. Or can I come over to your house for coffee? Whatever, coffee's cheap. Uh, and almost everybody drinks it. So, hey, we'll just meet up with you for coffee for 30 minutes. Um, if, you, if you're having trouble scheduling, get a Calendly link, uh, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. Um, I shoot that off to people. I'm like, hey, the easiest way to book a coffee with me is this, you know, I, I set up a little 15-minute coffee or 45-minute coffee with Rick or 15-minute coaching call with Rick, whatever. I set up a little link and people can just book that based off of my calendar. Automatically syncs with Gmail, 
So when I have other conflicts, it knows to block those time periods out. And it saves you, you know, if you think about that on every single phone call, well, when are you free? When are you free? When are you free? When are you free? It's just like, hey, I'm going to send you the link right now. Open Cheers. it up, see what you got on your calendar, and let's make sure it happens. Do it while we're on the phone, right? Make, get them to commit to doing it. So, you know, am I maintaining my open house standard? I would say that's you know, maybe number three on that is, you know, update your database, make the calls, make the expired calls, door knock the expireds, but then do the open houses too. Uh, and get your, get your family's commitment. And by family, I mean if you have close friends, if you have a spouse, if you have kids, and let them know, hey, I'm, in, I'm, I'm cranking. This is, this is go time, right? And at the end of it, we're going to have a little reward. We're going to go to that water park in Colorado Springs. We're going to go to the mountains for two days. Uh, whatever it might be, you're going to get a reward, and you're going to get a lot of me time. But for right now, I've really got to drill down and focus. And if you can't do that at home, if you can't do that at, all, at your office, go out. You can work from an open house 40 hours a week. Find a vacant listing, right? Set up your computer on your, on your, on your data plan and work from an open house. Why can't you make 100 phone calls from an open house? You can call expires from an open house. Because how many times, how many minutes of that open house are filled with somebody? Not a lot. So you see people doing like the floss and stuff like that, posting it on Instagram, that doesn't get them any business. <laughs> Call expires from the open house and when someone walks in, guess what, you're a busy realtor, you're a professional. Hey, good, to, one second, hey, good to see you, great, come on in, I'm not the kind, I'll like follow you around, make yourself at home, because you're gonna live here pretty soon, and I'll be right with you. Uh, so hey, right? Uh, oh, please sign in. For security reasons, the owner's asked us to have you sign in. So, uh, you know, just name, phone number, I'll be right with you. So you put that, you know, you put the sign-in sheet within three feet of the door. You ask them on the behalf of the homeowner, "Hey, for security reasons, can you just sign in?" Um, but then make yourself at home, right? And now you've got the contact information. They've had some freedom to walk around. You politely wrap up your phone call, but you can work double time. But hold an open house. Work from there. So, um, you know, our our goal with any coaching, and there's some other coaches in the room. Our goal with coaching is to give you the tools um, and the best information possible, but what you do with it is up to you, right? So do something if you don't do it all, but I encourage you to do it all if you're in survival mode. So hey, if you want more information, if you're online, uh, sevencountycoach.com, that's the number seven, countycoach.com, because there's seven counties in Denver. Um, my name is Rick Jansen, 303-589-2320 is my cell phone number. That's 303-589-2320. And Apollo, what's your cell phone number? Cell phone number is 720-236-5897. We're the best mortgage broker in Denver. All right, guys, thank you very much. We're going to wrap up the recording. And if there are any questions, I'm here. Thank you.